Malcolm Wilson can be relied upon to help rebuild the confidence. He'll be a brave man, isn't he? It, 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 somehow, if, if you get into the rhythm right at the start, it's such, you, you get all them right. Like, yeah, yeah. There's a couple of, I'm sure there'll be a couple of right handers where you come into a grassy section that Phil would tell you about. Yes. It's pretty flowing, yeah. There's a few tightening on coming down that last bit though, isn't there? There's a few Time. left handers that are tightening around there. No, around the bit the there. there. Yeah. But of course you couldn't go fast enough down there, you <coughs> Couldn't see. <laughs> <laughs> but determination in the dust wasn't going to be enough for the Metro men. After the news filters through that Jimmy McRae has dropped out with his blown engine, there are strong indications of engine problems throughout the main metro entry. Harry Toivonen, bravely returning to the sport after the death of his brother, also faces engine problems that were to end his rally. Austin Rover Motorsport boss John Davenport counts one back out onto the road, Malcolm Wilson, but David Llewellyn is needing a push start. The car fires up eventually, but it's been a disastrous few hours for the metros. The strong suspicion being that it's either a component problem affecting the works cars, or that the Scottish dust is fouling the engines. there's the consolation of Malcolm Wilson leading the rally. Up near the head of the pack, there's little dust in the air, but the aerodynamics were possibly sucking the dust into the engine compartment. Sundstrom is second, but Llewellyn's third place wouldn't last long. His engine is becoming sicker, and soon he concedes third spot to Mark Lovell's Ford. quite clear that Llewellyn is about to become engine failure number five. So the leader Malcolm Wilson is the only one of the top line metros to make it to the Glasgow Rest Halt and Wilson is also showing signs of the engine plague that has struck down his colleagues. the decision is made to retire his car while the expiring engine is still intact and use it to discover the fault that has wiped out the Metro challenge. The problem with the likes of David's engine and Jimmy's and Harry Toyman's is that those engines are actually destroyed um, completely and it's very difficult to diagnose a problem. Why has it all happened at once on this event? I don't know, it's just something in these, must be something in these four engines. Um, you know, we haven't had before. I mean, there's Tony's RAC engine, which is still running, believe it or not. You know, I think it's done 100 odd hours. It's incredible. I, I don't know the answer. I wish I did. <laughs> so what a change as the second leg started from Glasgow. Sundstrom really only challenged by Mark Lovell. His lead, three and a half minutes, but that's just the kind of winning position that Sundstrom threw away when he crashed out of the first round, the national breakdown. Michael, it's nice to see someone wearing overalls and ready for action this morning. You've got a good lead. How confident are you that this is the victory that you've been waiting for? <laughs> of course, it's 15 stages to go and everything can happen in rally. Uh, but um, I think at this time I have um, possibility to drive uh, slow enough to not have any accidents. And uh, the car is 100%, so I think it will be a good run. How hard have you been going so far in the event? Let's say 100%, uh, not 110 and not 90. But <laughs> 100%? Yes. And no problems at all? No problems at all. And um, what I said earlier on, the car have been 100%, no problem at all. And uh, uh, no mistakes, no, we have not went off. And so tires work very well and everything's been fine. We've talked to you before a little bit about the pressure on you, which started in the first event. Uh, the national breakdown. How aware are you of that now? Well, there was all, all, always a speak that it's the uh, last chance, and I think this is the fourth last chance this year, but uh, 
that uh, that not make a pressure on me. Certainly, Sundstrom didn't seem to be holding anything back as he fought to keep his advantage over Lovell. The British driver, who'd been going faster and faster since his poor start, was flipping away odd seconds. But he needed to increase the pressure enough to force a mistake. Well, the mistake did come, but not from Sundstrom. This is Lovell on a notorious corner in Twigley's Forest. spectacular accident did little more than completely rearrange the RS 200's bodywork leaving the spectators to collect a few souvenirs but it did cost him over two minutes in his battle to catch Sundstrom at the service halt the crew had it looking like a car again in no time and Lovell's hopes of victory had pretty well completely disappeared Mark the end of the day and it's all gone rather wrong what happened on that Twiggly stage. It hasn't gone wrong yet. We're still there. We're still in second, but um, we had a bit of a roll halfway through the stage. Fortunately, we there were some spectators there, pushed us back on the wheels, dropped about two minutes. What, what happened there? You just put a wheel over and... We just went a bit wide on a left-hander, and rather than being flat ground, there was a ditch. Once the wheel got in, we couldn't get back out, and it tipped over, rolled up the bank. How hard were you trying there, and what sort of impression did you feel that you were making on Sundstrom? Well, we've, we've been trying pretty hard throughout the whole rally, but um, I guess that our luck was bound to end somewhere. So uh, we had to keep the pressure on Michael. It was gone off now, he's just got to get home. Sundstrom's victory journey home was through the traditional last day rain that the Scottish always suffers. Second place Lovell suffering no more dramas, but rumoured at this stage to be threatened with further time penalties. Third place, the Toyota of Bjorn Valdegard, always entertaining, but a one-off championship appearance. The sole surviving Metro, the private entry of David Gillanders, took fourth place. And fifth place for Russell Brooks in the Manta was enough to give him the championship lead in the absence of the leading Metros. Russell, it's hard to be happy early on a wet Tuesday morning, but you must be pretty satisfied with the weekend's work. Yes, uh, we didn't look forward to the Scottish Rally because there were so many four-wheel drive cars and it's loose surfaces, and we knew all we could do was try and capitalise on the reliability of the Opal Manta, and I think that's what we've done fairly successfully because uh, obviously there's a bit of confusion over Lovell's results at the moment, but whichever way that turns out, um, it looks like we're leading the championship. Safe to say it's been a very strange event, isn't it? Incredible. I mean, I, if you'd asked me before the event started, I would have said with it being shortened, um, it would have been a, a fairly unexciting rally, albeit start, uh, fast at the very start. But, uh, of course, we've had so many retirements, and they're happening even now, of course, uh, unfortunately for the Vauxhall team, both their uh, Group A Astra uh, and the Nova retired only two stages from, three stages from the end. So uh, a rally absolutely full of dramas. What's the reason, do you think? I cannot explain it. Um, maybe because it's a shorter event, people drive that much faster and that much harder. Uh, and that's really the only ex explanation I can come up with. But here you are, top of the championship, with two tarmac rounds left, which must make you very optimistic about the final outcome. Um, well, it's difficult to be optimistic at this point because obviously the scoring system is the best five count out of the six, and we've now scored on every round. Uh, and that means we're going to have to drop a score probably sometime or other. So um, a lot of calculations to do, but certainly I think uh, I'd rather be leading at this point than lying second or third. In Glasgow, the pipes were no doubt meant to welcome Jimmy McRae's long-awaited Scottish victory. Instead, they were piping in Finland's Michael Sundström. season of disappointment and sometimes despair for him so far but now he'd scored his first major international victory in the Peugeot.